Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Raven Maureen and this is the video that I think most of us have been waiting for. And this is everything that I made in 2023. And y'all, it is a doozy. I tallied everything up. It is 85 garments. That's not including the tea towels, the ornaments, the 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 things I made for my craft fair. That's not including any of that. That's 85 things that I made for me and Joe, mostly me though. But first, let me address something because I don't wanna be accused of being wasteful or like over consumption or anything like that. I've been seeing that trending a lot on the internet. And let me just say that this challenge, I started a challenge at the top of the year. I said, I'm gonna make 52 garments, one for each week of the year. And I stayed true to that. And I actually surpassed the goal in like June, July or August. But back to the original point, I don't want to be accused of this because to me, this goal was personal. I had slacked off for two years prior to 2023, not really sewing as consistently as I wanted, right? Not making the things that I really wanted to make. And I was kind of like asleep at the wheel a little bit. I was, you know, trying to plan a wedding, trying to adjust to a new environment. I'm not from Mississippi, right? I live here. But it was a culture shock for me. And so, you know, I'm adjusting to all these things. I'm adjusting to work and whatnot. And I really let my hobby go. And so for me, this challenge of making 52 garments this year was about growth. It was about being persistent, consistent, and keeping a promise to myself. And in that entire space that I really kept this promise to myself, I gained so much knowledge I gained so many different new skills and I started thrifting again. I actually used to thrift back in college and I would buy like, you know, nice blazers and like the old school coach bags and the old school Dooney and Burke bags. I returned back to thrifting and flipped it and reversed it for myself and started getting into all these different parts and upcycling and whatnot. So for all of that, don't don't come over here and say that I've been wasteful. Don't do that to me. We're not going there today. But I will say that this is a long list. I already ate my lunch <laughs> and I've already told myself that I'll be recording this over a few days. So I need you to go ahead and grab your snack, grab some water, cause we're gonna get into these looks and I'm not gonna sit here and stay on these looks for a long time because you can actually go back and take a look at some of those videos. But I'll let you guys in on some other things that you probably may not know about some of these looks. Let's start with January. So as you can see, I am wearing the, uh, what is this? I have my notes. This is a sweater dress. This is Simplicity 9136. I'm actually wearing this today because I realized that there's absolutely nothing wrong with this dress and I haven't worn it all year. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna throw this on today for this video because I like this dress. And it's not that I necessarily forgot about it. I think it was more of, by the time I got around to wearing it, it was already getting warm again. And so it's kind of like I, you know, I live in the deep south and sometimes like I have the sensibilities of like the East Coast girl that I am. And I'm like, no, I want to wear this. And it's like, but girl, you don't live in that climate. <laughs> not anymore. Not right now. So the first thing that I did make in 2023 was a self-drafted sweater made out of a blanket that I bought at the store. That sweater is unwearable. Like I can't wear it because it's too hot and I think it would even be too hot on the East Coast. Um, it is truly a blanket that I made into a sweater and it's not functional. I may give it away or I may hold on to it and be like, this is what I did. Let me remind myself to never do this again. Okay, so then I also made the Isle Jeans by Chalk and Notch. So, I was disappointed about this as well. And the reason why I say that is because it was like I was getting like the droopy diaper butt as I was like wearing them. Like I would sit down for like less than five minutes and all of a sudden I had like a droopy bottom in the back. And I had already taken a ton of inches off of these pants. Um, and I had, I think I had even sized down a couple of sizes too. And it just seemed like if I had taken any more off of the pants, it, it, like it would even distort the back pockets. 
on this. So unfortunately, this was another garment that was honestly unwearable, but it lives rent free in my head because it was such a good concept. So this was something that I truly, truly loved y'all. Um, this is my baby pink cape. This was Vogue 9288. And I had this pink wool fabric from Fine Fabrics. And y'all, y'all want to know something? This cape, I, <laughs> I was making it and when I was trying it on, I was like, oh my God, I think I'm a, I, I, I think I look like I'm in The Handmaid's Tale. Like I just... <laughs> I love this I love this cape though but I really felt like like Serena in The Handmaid's Tale with this cape on or like so ah. <laughs> I might still wear it I might still wear it but whenever I see the picture of myself in it I'm like it's giving Handmaid's Tale so let's get into February I felt like I really like just said I'm going to do everything in February. Like February, I felt like was a banger. January, I was really experimenting with a lot of things, a lot of things that seemingly didn't really work out. And then February is like the moment, right? So I made the Wilder blouse for Valentine's Day. I love this blouse and you all loved this blouse. I did wear this on Valentine's Day with my husband. Um, When he took me out, we went out to... um oyster shell or half it was half shell we went to half shell and I wore this and I got a lot of compliments on it and this is one of those things where like I just love this and this was a labor of love I think I did French seams on it because it is like a a net I wouldn't even call it like a a lace it's not a lace it's more like a netting or a mesh but I saw the same fabric in Hobby Lobby like a few days ago and if you want to recreate this look or if you just love this fabric, get it now because somebody going to scoop that fabric up. The next thing I made was McCall's 8339 and I'll be very honest with you, it was too cold when I first made this dress. However, I'm so glad I made it in February because spin it around to like sometime later down the year I actually ended up wearing this to an award ceremony for my husband for his job and this got a lot of compliments like a lot of people really enjoyed this dress on and off the internet 10 out of 10 I would absolutely make it again I have made it again <laughs> and that's coming down the line too okay so then I made Vogue 1923 and I do have a sew along for this one and this is an off the shoulder Again, I use this heart style fabric from Hobby Lobby. Again, get it now because when January, February spins around in 2024, it's going to be gone. Then I made the patina, the patina blouse by Friday Pattern Company. And y'all, um, I like the buttons I used. I like the fabric that I used. The neckline for me was very challenging to get done. I actually had to hand sew it and y'all know I do not like hand sewing. And I have tried to find ways to wear this blouse because I think it's actually really cute. But again, this is one of those where the weather doesn't quite permit for me to wear it at certain times. Like I wanted to do it with like a really cute pair of shorts um, in spring, but spring down here is like summer. So it just didn't really work out. So I'm hoping that going into 2024 I can actually get some good use out of this um blouse that I made now I have worn it on this channel then I also did the Sisley slip dress in this really really pretty abstract faces print I love abstract faces I love this dress and I actually cut this dress so that I could bring it with me to New York in the summer and I cut it put it in my suitcase and then never wore it then I made the Atlas wrap dress in February, and this personally was a flop for me. Um, I love this dress, but this was the moment where I said, okay, it's time for me to be serious about doing full bust adjustments because it was such a waste, y'all. Like, I made this, I was so excited about it, it looked so great on everyone, and then I did it, and I just felt like it looked, it, it didn't look its best. Um, and it was because I needed to do a full bust adjustment. So this was a learning experience for me. I, 
I kind of wish it didn't have to happen on this project, but it did. And this was a turning point because after that, I really started looking at my clothes differently and seeing, you know, what it is I need to change about what I'm doing as far as making tops. So we are going into March and March was another turning point where I really started wearing the clothes that I was making. Like I was really getting into the things that I wanted to do. And so um, I made Simplicity 8416, which is a linen shirt. I have worn this short, this shirt up the street to Virginia, down the block to Atlanta, um, around the corner to Costco. I have worn it on the internet. I have worn it on Zoom meetings. This, this linen shirt was in hot rotation this year, hot. For as much as I rotated that shirt, this is one thing I didn't rotate. And this is Simplicity 8655, which um, these were a version of Mimi G's uh, pattern, her jeans. And this is, I've made this pattern before and I've been successful in making this pattern in the past. So this was another situation where I was getting diaper butt and whatnot. So I don't know if I'm maybe not picking the right denim or I don't know, maybe that's an area that truly needs improvement for me. So the third thing was the Blanca flight suit. Now the Blanca flight, flight suit has an extraordinary story because I started this in 2022 in the fall i made it a point in march to really just say i'm gonna finish this and i love this i've, I've taken this to toronto i wore it in toronto for a day um i've worn it a couple of different places i think i even wore it to a work meeting this year um i love this flight suit now i will be i will be extremely transparent with you guys i have put on some weight and i cannot get back into my flight suit so the goal for 2024 is not to make a new one but get back in the old one, okay? So y'all, this is hands down one of my favorites. And this is Simplicity 9687. This is a Mimi G pattern. And this came out this year. I very seldom say, oh, I'm gonna make this pattern right away if it's not something I'm doing a sew along for. And I made this pattern right away and it served me so well. And every time I wear this jacket, the amount of compliments I get or people that they see the back of it and they're like, okay, black girl magic, you know how we do. So <laughs> I love this jacket. I wore this jacket in Toronto. I've worn it out of town several times and the resounding constant with this is the compliments I get. And I love this jacket so much. One of a kind, you'll never see me trade it for anything. So the other thing I made was the Lola tank dress. And this was something I had wanted to make for two years, but I was like, oh my God, no, my body, my hips, my dips, my curves. Oh no, I can't do it. And then I made it and I was like, what was, what was all that for Raven? You could have been had this in your closet. And so I made it and I was also mad with myself that I didn't make it sooner. So the other thing I made was the short sleeve hoodie, also another Mimi G pattern, but this is an incredibly easy pattern. If you have an afternoon or something, you can do this pattern like that. All right, so let's get into April. So April was another month that I have really worn a lot of these things. And this was also the first month that um, was a mile marker for me, I guess you could call it, because this is when my first trip was. So if we're looking at 2023, I went to Miami in April for a bachelorette party. I went to Toronto in May. And then in July, we had our honeymoon, which was delayed for about a year. And then in June, sorry, we did go to New York for a little bit. And then in October, I went back to New York for Frocktails and for DG work. And then a few weeks ago, we also went to Virginia um, to spend time with family. So that's six trips, you guys. So I pretty much had me made wardrobes for all of those trips. So going back to April, April was my first trip on the books. This was a bachelorette party and we had instructions for what to wear. So this was huge for me because I was able to take those instructions and say, what can I make with these instructions? My friend's sister planned the entire thing and she was like, you need a black bathing suit, you need a pink dress and you need, um, I think it was pajamas because there was a pajama party. So I was like, 
bet. So I started April with 9702, which is this maxi dress. Um, this was my first full bust adjustment dress. And I love this dress. I wear it a lot. And I believe I wear it so much because I did the full bust adjustment and I feel totally confident in it. Then I also made McCall 7969, which I ain't even gonna front y'all. I forgot that was in my closet, but wait on a date night. I'm gonna bring that out. Um, then I made McCall's 7862. This is a raglan sleeve, long sleeve blush dress. I have actually worn it a few times on this channel. And I think I may have worn it once somewhere to like a function, but I think this is one of those where it's like, this probably needs to be worn a little bit more in 2024. Then I made the Lola tank top because I loved the Lola tank dress so much. So then I did McCall's 8339 again, and this was one of the pink dresses. Um, this was a pink dress that I had to wear in Miami. So I made this specifically for Miami. I actually made it into a mini and this was a quick sew so that way I could focus on other things. But I felt really confident in this. I didn't feel like I was out of place because sometimes in places like Miami, I always feel like I'm, I don't fit in. And this was one of those where I felt like I don't care if I fit in. I look great. I know I look great. I'm not worried about it. And then I did the DIY pajama set. And this was a leopard pajama set that I wore to the pajama party at the Bachelorette. And this was um, an Ogden cami, which is like a tried and true for me. I have like 15 of them. And I also did some a random shorts pattern. And I have a video on that on this channel. I made the Marley suit. This is an Edgewater Avenue bathing suit pattern. I This is my first time making it and I was so excited to make it. And I loved the cutout. I love the one shoulder. And this was a banger on the trip. Like the girls, they didn't really know anything about me. Um, but the ones that had never met me, there were some girls there that, that, you know, knew me from before. I knew them from before and we follow each other on social media. But for the girls that had never really engaged with me, we didn't know each other. Um, they didn't know that I made my own clothes. And so they were like, oh, I really like that bathing suit. And someone was like, she made it. And it just, it turned into a whole thing, but those girls were so sweet and really nice. And they had great bathing suits too. And, and I think I wore this, we went on like a yacht and we did like a, a yacht party type thing. And we all wore black and Kelly wore white and it was just really nice. Um, and I actually packed this for my honeymoon this year. And I don't think I ever wore it on the honeymoon, but it's a good bathing suit y'all. For the same trip, I also made the saguaro set. Now, I had been, y'all, I was like, I'm waiting to make this. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. And it lived up to the expectations. I actually did a full bust adjustment on the dolman sleeve, which I'm very proud of myself for. And I really needed it too because it was too revealing. And I wanted to be able to still kind of like wear it sort of modestly. And I love this set. Um, not only did I wear it in Miami, but I also wore it on my honeymoon as well. So there were two things that I forgot to mention yesterday when I was filming this. So that was McCall's 8312, which is like a dress that I made out of an Ikea duvet cover. And I like this pattern. I know that it's something I've never really made before, but I actually want to make this again. And I have an entire video over over on my channel for the pattern review and just kind of some other hacks that I made with that one. And then the other thing was the Hickory Ensemble, which is a free pattern by Mood. There's also another video on this channel for that as well. And this was a sweatpants suit that I pretty much like hacked into like a color block set. And it was a lot of fun. So let's talk about June. June was a month where I really got into upcycling using bed sheets because I made the Mabel dress out of a bed sheet. I made the um, Pants for Joe Simplicity 9338 out of a bed sheet. And then I did the white PJs, um, the McCall's like frilly um, pattern. That was also a thrifted bed sheet. That's McCall's 8392. So I did quite a bit with the bed sheet and I'm gonna continue doing that into 24 as well. So then I also did a Juneteenth type dress. This was something that I actually packed in my suitcase for New York. 
This was Mimi G's Simplicity 9597. And then I did um, McCall's 7789. This is a peekaboo dress that I did. And this is actually um, mood fabric here. And I actually have a video on these two dresses as well. And I wore both of these in New York for our trip to see my family and just kind of take in all the sights and whatnot. Then in July, so July I was, I was a woman on a mission. I don't think I stopped once to look up from my sewing machine. And so I did a few things in July and I'm being, that's an understatement. So I did McCall's 8403. This was a sew along that I did. This was a cutout dress. It had a cutout, two cutouts on the side, like a plunging neckline, like two zippers there was an invisible zipper on the top invisible zipper in the skirt if you catch the sew along then you'll see all of that but this was a really cute dress and then i did simplicity 8594 and y'all i have yet to wear this dress but i love it so much um so that's going to be at the top of my list for 24 to to wear when the weather gets nice um then i did simplicity 9757 in this mint rib knit. I didn't like it at first. I was like, what the heck did I just make? And then I ended up making another version of it down the line. It's actually really easy sew. And um, if you're just getting into working with knits, this is probably a really good pattern for you. Then I did McCall 7789 again, except for this was a white and tan polka dot dress that I actually wore on my honeymoon. And I wore this to the steakhouse for elegant night and I loved it. I just felt like a goddess in that. I also made the yellow Mabel dress. So I made the white one in June, the yellow one in July, and the yellow one has bias tape straps. Um, that was kind of fun. I might actually do that again this year because actually that dress was, I, I wore that dress a lot in the summer this year and it was because it was comfortable, it was flattering. I felt great in it, I felt confident in it. So I feel like I wanna make another one this year. So then I did the neon bathing suit. That was the Savannah bottoms and the Georgia top. I made the Georgia top back in 22, did the Savannah bottoms this year. And I was just like, why didn't I make these bottoms sooner? They are so good. The, the band on them is really thick. So it just kind of like scoops you all in and makes you look really pretty. So that was, that was really fun. Then I did the Georgia leopard top, even though I had made the biker shorts back in 22 as well so i was happy to complete two looks i guess you could say then i did um mccall's 8413 this was a leopard cover-up i had gotten this fabric back in new york and i wanted to make a cover-up with it i wasn't too happy with this cover-up i felt like it was too long and i should have trusted my instincts when i was making it but you live and you learn and if I make this again, I will definitely be making it much shorter. Then I did Simplicity 9597. This was again Mimi G's pattern, except for this time I did pants. And I loved this jumpsuit. It got a little complicated when I had to use the bathroom a few times, but I'm willing to sacrifice some bathroom situations for a really good fashion look. So this next one was a redo. This was um, the Cura Top that I had put with the, it was a red bathing suit bottom that I already made and I don't remember what year that was, but I remade the top because I didn't love the top. And um, it turned out great. I wore this in Grand Cayman on our honeymoon and it was a really good day. So I also did Simplicity 9778. This was the Mimi G dress that came out this summer. And I did it in a black knit. It's got a little cutout right underneath the bust. And y'all, if you haven't made this dress yet, I do not know what you're waiting for. But this dress just, just perfection. I loved it. I felt great in it. And I think I said this before. I'm going to say it again. I don't mind making 10 more of those. I really don't. Oh, then I did 9758, Simplicity 9758. This was Joe's Hoochie Daddy set, um, which this was something that I personally wanted to make for Joe. He picked out the fabric. Um, 
and this was a good look he got a lot of compliments on it and he was right on trend on our honeymoon i think just about every husband boyfriend brother cousin uncle had on a hoochie daddy set of their own but nobody had joe's so that was great so then i did new look 6736 this was an instant hit you guys loved it on the internet people loved it in person and this was a halter top maybe a cover-up back then i didn't know what i made i still don't know what i made but i do have a sew along for this and this is one of those things where i will probably probably be carrying this in more vacations to come and then i paired the new look halter with um this is a vintage shorts pattern simplicity 8932 and i have been wanting a pair of white shorts so so it was kind of fitting that i did make it for this trip and i really liked that it was a vintage fit so it had like darts in the back really easy so it had buttons on the side so it kind of had like almost the sailor appeal to it um but it was cute i really liked it the saturday skirt set so this was something I was honestly quite disappointed in. It was nothing wrong with the construction, nothing wrong with the fabric, nothing wrong with the pattern. I think it was just, I did not feel my best in this. And I think I would feel a lot better in this if it was a solid color or I'm just not sure, but I just didn't feel my best in it. And I really love this pattern and I really wanna give it another chance. So I call this my Bond Girl bathing suit. This was an ivory bathing suit that I used, the Heidi top and the Amelia bottoms from Edgewater Avenue. Then this was probably my least favorite bathing suit all year. I was instantly regretting it as I was making it. This is the Frankie one piece. I'm not gonna talk about it any more than that. I know I kind of whizzed by June and July, but I have a ton of videos about all of those looks so I didn't want to stay on that too long because there's a lot of information out there already for them but we're gonna jump into August now so for August I did um, McCall's 8162 these were the white overalls I actually used um, a set of curtains that I found at the thrift store to make the overalls and I love these overalls the only thing I didn't like was that there was a snap on the side where I felt like they probably should have just put a zipper um, versus just having that snap there. But otherwise, these shorts were my jam in late summer. Then I did McCall's 7936. I would consider this kind of like a replacement jumpsuit because I had made one of these back in 2020. I think it got lost in the move. I have not seen it since 2020. So I remade it more or less with a similar palm leaf uh, print fabric. And I love this. I love it a lot. This was something else that I um, regretted not making sooner. This was something that I just absolutely loved making. I adored it. There is a sew along for it on this channel. I made the free bucket hat pattern from Mood Fabrics. And I love this hat. It's going to be a hot rotation this summer in 24. I also did M8165. This was the knit tie-dye jumper. Um, this was something I wore definitely a lot in August and then in early fall. I really wish that I had adjusted the inseam a little bit more to make it less drop crotchy. That, it, that doesn't even sound right, but <laughs> hopefully you get what I'm saying. Um, I would absolutely make this again. This is such a fun look. I feel like I feel like a teenager when I wear it, but not in like a bad way. Like this is a very fun young look for me. So then I also did McCall's 7948. This is the black eyelet dress. I love this pattern. It's such a classic for me. And I really like that I chose to do eyelet. I did not line this. So when I'm wearing it, it's actually like nude underwear that I'm wearing. And I didn't really feel like lining eyelet because it's supposed to be breathable. And I felt like it would defeat the purpose almost if I actually lined it. Then before I forget, I also did the Barbie dress this year. That was with a jiffy pattern. And I loved this fabric. I got it from uh, a store in Toronto and that was a really fun experience. And I have never gotten a chance to wear this dress. So hopefully 
this coming summer I can break that out. Okay, so it is day three of me filming this. Obviously, you guys can tell by the way that my clothes have been changing and whatnot. And I forgot to talk about May. So, let me go back to my notes. <laughs> I guess I just skipped a line and then like never looked up. I don't know what happened. But for May, I did a sew along for McCall's 8389. I made this purple denim skirt with like a front exposed zipper. It really reminds me of like, a denim jacket but make it a skirt um and i love this pattern i honestly would probably do this again with the um fuller skirt at the bottom which is one of the views in that pattern and then after that i made mccall's 8380 this is the one shoulder seersucker dress this was another sew along that i did it was a vintage pattern y'all that vintage pattern almost broke me but i made it through <laughs> I love my dress for it and it honestly makes me want to get into vintage patterns for 2024. I also made the Heather blazer and this was kind of like a linen blend navy blue blazer and this was like this was the one thing that I was trying to get to for months and months and months and it was like it just wasn't the right time every time I went to it and then a trip for Toronto turned up and I ended up needing something light like that and so I made it. And then I made one of my favorite dresses. Um, this is McCall's 8177. It's got like this tool or toil type print and it's blue and it's white and it's like perfect for spring. Okay, so now that we're back on schedule, <laughs> let's talk about some timber. So I did um, Simplicity 9679, which is the black top with like the cutout right here. I wore it a few times on this channel and then also with my cargo pants. And then I also did Simplicity 9469, which I hacked into a dress. And this was probably one of the easiest patterns I made this year. And I love this dress. Honestly, I might do it again in 24. I also made the fringe dress out of this gorgeous, gorgeous print fabric. And again, something that I would recreate again going into 24. Um, I, I love this dress. Like this dress can do no wrong. I felt just so beautiful and festive in this dress. And this was a time where I noticed that like my body was changing and I was gaining weight and things like that. And I am so appreciative of how this dress made me feel that I'll cherish it forever. So I did um, another sew along. This is McCall's 8442 which is a vest pattern. This vest pattern has about like eight different views in it. And I can't tell you which view I decided to do. You'll have to go back and watch the video. But I love this vest. I, more than anything, I love the pictures I took with this vest. It just gives me like Gap vibes so much. And I was a Gap kid in the 90s. And so I used to look up to like the models and the Gap ads and be like, I'm gonna be like that when I grow older. And to like recreate almost like a Gap ad in my own way was kind of cool with this make. I also made Simplicity 9702 again, except for I made it with florals, I made it shorter and I made the sleeves longer. This was a really cool make. And I think I'm tapped out with this pattern. Like I'm not gonna lie, but the two dresses that I have from this pattern, I will probably cherish forever. So I did Nomi 2046, and this is the striped maxi dress with the slits on the side. I love this dress. This dress just makes me feel super comfortable, super loungy. I wear it around the house a lot if I'm just like, if I need to do things, but I also want to feel relaxed. It's, it's, it's just a good pattern. If you haven't made this pattern yet, you're missing out. Then I did Simplicity 9381. This is a Mimi G pattern, and this is kind of like a classic style pair of shorts with like two pleats. I think on each front side and then like some back pleats and a fly front zipper and whatnot. I liked this print from Mood Fabrics and I said I just want to make like shorts or pants out of it and I love these shorts. Now the challenge is can I make something this year that's actually going to match the shorts because that was like the biggest reason why I didn't really wear them as much is that I didn't really have a lot to match with it so that's something that I have to do in 24. Then I made my quilted skirt and I'll be very honest with you I the concept in my head was like really cool and then once I did it I was like I just made a circle skirt and I didn't mean to like 
<laughs> I used a free pattern. I have a whole sew along on this channel for it. And because there was so much volume in the quilted pillow shams that I used, they were thrifted quilted pillow shams, it like totally turned the skirt into not even an A-line skirt. It just became like a circle skirt. So rolling into October, October was, I feel like the month where I had to make a lot of things for a lot of events. I had frock tails the first week of October and then the second week I had to go to a wedding out of town. So it was kind of like I was intentionally sewing for these events and I don't want to say it knocked me off my schedule but I had to commit right then and there to these items and it was probably my most complicated month because I did a lot of things that I probably don't always do. So I did Simplicity 9338, which is the shacket. And the shacket took me, I would say, the entire fall season to make, but I believe I completed it in, no, I must've started in October. And I think I completed it in November. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, McCall's 8009, this is my Frocktails jumpsuit. This was completely inspired by Disco Era Studio 54. This jumpsuit has a outer layer and a lining and a zipper. I used fabric I normally wouldn't use. I made the pants see-through, so I wore bathing suit bottoms underneath it, but this was strictly for the New York City Frocktails event. Loved it, loved wearing it. I would totally wear this again. Then I did McCall's 8341. This was for a wedding for one of my friends, actually the same friend that I made my bachelorette pieces for um or her bachelorette um party for and um i love this dress she kind of had like a outdoor indoor wedding in atlanta so the weather was pretty decent that day it was actually a really beautiful day i felt extremely comfortable in this dress this dress has a lot of elements there's a slit there's ruching there's a hole right here it's long sleeve it's it's everything so I continued my upcycling adventures with my quilted jacket. This was Nomi 2057 by designer Alyssa Threads. And I love this jacket. I actually wear it. Um, I've worn it a couple of times actually, like in the rain. It's highly functional in the rain. I've worn it to take blue for walks. Like it's, it's a really good pattern and it keeps me really warm. This was a thrifted quilt top blanket of some sort and I had just enough to get the hood out and whatnot. So I and I have been thoroughly enjoying this jacket. I also did McCall's 8343, which was a white half zip. And I love this half zip, but somewhere between wearing it to a craft fair and then like wearing it somewhere else, I have like these random stains on like the front bib part and on the sleeves. And it just kind of breaks my heart because I love this half zip, but I can't get the stains out. Like OxyClean can't even help me. And yeah. All right, so we're easing into November. Um, I did the quilt block sweatshirt. So this was something that I saw like on Pinterest. I made it, thought it was cool. I shared it with all of you guys. And then I said, hmm, I wonder how this would do it at like my markets and my craft fairs and it was a success and then i added them to my etsy shop so i have a few of them in my etsy shop if you guys are interested in those and i'm going to continue that on into 24 especially for my markets and whatnot because it was definitely a conversation starter it was it was wildly successful i also did the carla loungewear set this is by swim style patterns i believe and I used this green tie-dye fabric I had three yards of from Walmart, of, of all the places, right? And I wear this a lot. I wear this to bed a lot. And I actually packed this for our trip in December when we went to go um, see Joe's parents um, for about a week. And this kept me warm. I felt great. I felt comfortable. It's one of my favorite sets, and I'm thinking about making another one, honestly. Um, I also did Nomi Pattern 2054, which was the cargo pants out of a bed sheet, y'all. Out of a bed sheet. Um, I love this pattern. Marcia, she put her foot in that pattern. Like, that pattern is so amazing. I felt so confident, so powerful, just like I can just take over the world um these pants when you put them on they just they just make you feel 
amazing in them and so this was a successful pants pattern for me this year and I actually have some denim here in my sewing room and I want to attempt to make a denim pair going into 24. The infamous Marlowe sweater. If you guys have seen my journey with this sweater, <laughs> it was wild. Um, I have two videos about this sweater. I have the fail and then I have the success. And um, it's, it's a good sweater. I love this sweater. I keep it folded up in my closet. Um, I don't use a hanger with it because I don't want it to like stretch out the shoulders or anything, but I love this sweater. This sweater gives me so much joy and um, I can't wait to continue wearing it. So let's ease on into December. December was probably by far my lightest month. Um, I had just wrapped my markets for the year. We went out of town for a week. It's the holidays. I literally made three things and I'm not mad at that. Like after the year I had, after making eight, 10 items, you know, for months on end, like I deserved to just make three things in December. So I did Simplicity 9018. As you can see, I'm wearing the turtleneck from this. And I love this set. This was something that was just like right off the top of my head. I started sketching and I have a whole sewing vlog about it. But if you see, if you know this full set, like this set just brings me, brings me joy. And someone said, I don't remember if it was on here or on another social media channel. They were like, this reminds me of um, D-Light, Groove is in the Heart. And when I saw it, I just started singing the song and I was like, I have to play the song now. So um, I love that that person made that comparison because I, I love that song. So thank you. I did the quilted pants with Nomi 2033. This was Ella's pattern. And I had been wanting to make these pants for a while. Little did I know that I would be making these pants out of like quilted fabric. And I have a whole sewing vlog about this, um, but I love these pants and they're super warm. That was probably the number one question I got was like, how do they feel? And it's like, they feel like you're wearing a blanket on your legs in like the best possible way. Um, the other question I got about the pants was the waistband. The waistband has an elastic piece in the back. And then the front is just, there's no um, zipper or button or anything like that. So I felt like this was probably like the most plausible pattern to use with quilted fabric. And then my last make uh, was McCall's 8037. This was my Christmas dress and I had just enough fabric to make this dress and I have a whole vlog about that one as well. And this was, um, you guys kind of called it the Brillo pad dress, which is kind of funny to me. Um, and I happen to agree because that fabric on the outside is rough, but it is so smooth on the inside. And I love this dress. Um, I won't limit it to just Christmas um, because I think it's just so beautiful. And that's it. That is... You guys, that is my 2023 in a nutshell. Um, today is December 30th. I have maybe a day left if I decide I want to do something. And if I decide I want to do something, that will be in the January recap, which I'll be doing at the end of January. So I want to thank you guys all so, so much for coming along on this crazy ride, for sticking with me, for watching my ups and my downs. I can't wait to share with you my goals for 2024. That's going to be coming up in another video. If you like this video and if you like this channel, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And if you're not following me already, you can follow me at Raven Maureen on Instagram, TikTok, and Threads. I'll see you guys next year. Bye!